So today we are coming to the podcast with a heavy heart. As most of you know, we got the notice that Solar, uh, sorry, Titan Solar has closed its doors. It's no longer doing business. Probably old news to most of you listening to this podcast. But another one bites the dust. And so today we're going to talk about it, the effects of it, my thoughts on it, and just a couple things that we can lessons learned from this. Um, welcome to the podcast. My name is Taylor Armstrong. We are here to help you close more deals, generate more leads and referrals, and hopefully have a much better time in the solar industry and also not go out of business. <laughs> um, but these things happen. And um, I'll tell a little bit of my story. I know I've shared bits and pieces here and there in separate podcasts. Um, but, you know, I've been in solar since 2016 and in, in solar years, that's a lot of years, right? Um, I have seen a lot of companies come and go. I've been with multiple companies that have closed their doors and it's a tough thing to see, tough thing to go through. Okay, so let's get into the topic here. So um, just wanted to give my background. Again, I've been in solar since 2016. My first company I was with for about four years and I was seeing signs of them starting to go downhill, um, ended up leaving that company, um, went to a different dealer and they sold to another dealer. Um, and now all three of those companies have closed their doors. They're not doing business anymore. And then, you know, the latest big company that fell was, um, at the dealer I came from before I joined legacy power over here. Um, we had a local company here in San Diego where we we were using, um, seemed like a great company on paper. Um, but eventually they stopped, they started having more and more pay delays. Um, we were getting paid on like backdated deals and, um, yeah, eventually they just stopped paying us altogether. And I think they're out of business. I guess I can't say for sure, but um, pretty sure they're out of business or at least close to it because I call their offices. I don't get anyone to pick up. I know there's fall on probably both sides of the table, right? The people, um, our dealer, I know we didn't do a lot of things correctly. And then the installer, of course, they struggle with a ton of things. So I didn't get paid out. Um and if I added up all the money that I have not been paid out by companies that have gone out of business, issues that have happened, um, it's well over six figures that I have personally not been paid out just by issues, companies going, on, going out of business. So it's a sad thing to hear, okay? But obviously, I am still in solar. I still believe in it. I still think it's modern day gold rush, um, one of the best industries we can be in. And even after not getting paid out, a lot of money like you know i look at any pretty much any other job i could do and i just don't see the potential still even with the, the issues we're seeing in solar okay i don't see the potential in almost every other industry <laughs> okay so let's talk about three quick lessons we can learn from this okay number one you probably heard this but don't just chase the lowest red line don't look for the highest pay instead look for hey what's a good pay but what's um, a company that's paying well, that will be around to service my customers that will answer their calls that has decent reviews, um, that tries to improve things that goes back and resolves issues quickly when they happen, look for a company like that. Okay. And we all see these people that just go chase the lowest red lines, the most pay. I watched, uh, two guys that's, I thought had really good things to say about this. Sam Taggart, John Frampton, both these dudes have been around in solar. Um, also seen a lot of companies got a business and they posted. Yeah. I'd encourage you. You can go watch what they posted on it on uh, Instagram, Facebook, their social medias. Um, but these guys, you know, John Frampton obviously led like, um, if you don't know who he is, he led, uh, was one of the original like solar city guys. Um, I think led the entire East coast of solar city, right? So this guy knows companies has been around and he did a video just talking about this, like how we all need to not just race to the bottom, 
right? We need to build value. We need to look for companies that will serve. We ourselves need to serve the customers, not just be chasing the lowest red line. Okay, so that's lesson number one. If you are running a dealer, um, don't fall for this like lowest red line thing. Okay, you got to do your research. You got to understand, um, you know, the installer you're working with and just make sure you don't fall in that trap. Okay, so that's lesson number one. And then number two, maybe more for the sales reps. Maybe you're currently with a company that you're seeing some red flags or seeing some signs. Just like I was, um, you got to be um, loyal, but I would say don't be loyal to the point where you're like, fall like going down with the burning ship with the sinking ship. Okay. Um, if I could have gone back to when we were working with this local installer at my previous dealer, um, I saw the signs. I was seeing more and more pay delays. Okay. And I get it. Sometimes there's things that happen, even bigger companies. Sometimes maybe there's, I don't know, issues with payroll, whatever. So you got to be patient, but it's like, come on, when these things happen over and over and over, um, I don't be like me. Okay, don't stay if the issues keep happening over and over and over. I went months and months and months where there were multiple delays. Um, I was getting paid out just like 25% of what I was owed and then told I was going to get paid out the rest later. And it just kept happening over and over and over. Okay, and then same with my first company. It's like we were paid less. We were told that um, we were going to get money. We had these carve out units. We were going to told, we were told that when the company sells, we're going to make this huge bag, right? We're all going to be rich, uh, billionaires, pretty much not billionaires, but make tons of money off this transaction. And a lot of it was just like a pipe dream, right? And we saw one of the owners leave. Okay. And clues can happen, right? So just make sure you're paying attention to these things. Be loyal, but don't be loyal to a fault. Okay, recognize the writing on the wall. If you're having delays, 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 if the back end of your company is just super disorganized, um, if you're having troubles getting updates, if your customers can't call and get updates, maybe that's a sign. Either stop using that installer or, I don't know, consider a different company. Okay, but make sure you, like, I, I hate to see people not get paid okay, with their own. So learn from my lessons with that. And then the third lesson is just serve your homeowners even after companies got a business. For all those people that use Titan, I myself, I probably have around five deals that I did with Titan. Um, I haven't heard, this was a couple of years ago, okay, so it's been a while. Um, but I'm sure I probably will get calls from these people that I install with Titan. And like I mentioned from the beginning, I still get multiple calls from people from my first company that were installed, um, especially because this first company where um, I, in the agreement, we included like a service plan to where they would get their panels cleaned. They would have like yearly service checkups. So naturally that it's going to get a lot more calls because people are expecting like a service checkup and a panel cleaning, which obviously they're not doing anymore. Okay. So um, if you did work with an installer where they've gone out of business, just like still serve your customer. Okay. Don't be scared. Answer them. Um, all the experience I've had with it. I still pick up the calls for my customers from five, six, seven years ago. Um, sometimes they're really upset, but I'm always honest with them. Hey, um, unfortunately company isn't around anymore. Um, you still do have a warranty with your manufacturer. Uh, what's going on with the panel, have them contact and I've had to contact and phase with them a few times. My family is installed with my first solar company that's out of business. Okay. So, um, I'm still going to do everything I can to service them and help them. So make sure you do the same thing. And that's how we're going to get through this as an industry. If we were thinking of our customers, if we were thinking of the families we serve and always having that mindset, not trying to avoid people, not trying to race to the bottom. I think that's how we're going to continue as an industry and still make great commissions, not be regulated. Okay, these are what we need to do. Okay, so hopefully that uh, gives you just, I don't know, some lessons learned. Maybe you're in a similar situation to what I was. Um, but yeah, let's just keep moving this thing forward. It's going to take a joint effort. We all have to bring like integrity to this industry. We all have to not race to the bottom. Um, we can't just focus on commissions, right? We can't just be the solar bros trying to go out and make, and make the bag. 
get the car, not answer our customers' calls, not serve our customers. That's how we're going to like crash this, crash and burn this entire industry. So make sure you are part of the solution, not part of the problem. And let's learn from this together. Um, but hey, rest in peace, Titan. It was great hanging with you guys. I knew a lot of great people over there. And um, let's serve those homeowners and potentially people looking for other opportunities that we're working with Titan. Let's do everything we can to serve those people, help them back on their feet and help them get solar from hopefully a company that's solid. Okay. So uh, those are my thoughts. Hopefully you took some from something from that. And uh, next podcast, I'm really excited. We have someone that's coming on that uh, just, I think a two-time Golden Door um, has a team of just super tight-knit team. I think he has like less than 10 setters and this dude is like doing 200 plus deals a year, like clockwork, Um, just crushing it. Has a team of like people that came from pest control and just producing insane results for the amount of people he has. 